Uh, what else? What are, what, are, what are the thoughts? We're just looking for thoughts, takeaways, questions. I just want to make this an open panel presentation this morning. So since, since you brought up uh, you know traditional bank loans and everything, obviously there's two schools of thought as far as leverage versus debt. Mm -hmm. um, my husband and I are on opposite schools, <laughs> but no surprise. Um, that's usually how it works out. <laughs> but for for the for the younger generation, um, what do you think is a good strategy for, for leveraging our debt to, to get somewhere faster? Uh, le leverage your, 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 your capital, Ver or your yeah, assets. Right. So I think we talked about it a little bit a couple days ago, but you know, if you, if you can take out a loan or if you can fund something else at you know 2.5% yeah. and you're making a 10% return over here, not tying up your money, yep. you, know, you get yep. what I'm saying? So yes, um, you probably all, all heard the term, uh, I think Sean even talked about yesterday, uh, you know, there's good debt and bad debt, right? Dave Ramsey would say, all debt's bad, and I don't have anything against Dave Ramsey, uh, but he's not speaking to this group. Uh, there is a use for debt, no doubt about it. Um, I wouldn't be where I am today, and probably everybody that you see in our room wouldn't be where they are today without the use of some debt at some point. I mean, look, today, uh, school's expensive. There's debt just to get a certain level of education, is there not? Uh, you know, how much you make sense on the return is, is, is debatable in some cases today because the costs have gone up a lot. But to your point, uh, especially when you're young, uh, the proper use of good debt, good leverage, uh, is, is, is the fastest way to grow your net worth, your wealth, your estate. That's where we all are when we're young. We want to grow that. So whether you're putting that in by investing in yourself, as I talked about this morning, so the right class, courses, membership in some group that you know is going to really uh, move the needle for you uh, and you have a good confidence and you got to borrow some money to make that happen because it's going to gonna hit, you're gonna hit an inflection point and really move, then, then you go for it. Um, if you have uh, business opportunities uh, and you just need to borrow some money to, to get a piece of equipment, well, that, that, that uh, printer that you got, right? So you invested in a, I don't know what it's called, but some, some high-level printer that allows you to produce um, a, a product that before that, you had to outsource it, and so, but you, I'm guessing you probably financed that, or maybe not. Okay, good for you. Well, when you can start self-funding your, your capital uh, improvements, that's great. So whether you did or didn't, but that could, that could be one where if you didn't have the capital or the, it wasn't available, you say, well, does it make sense, right? So again, that's an arbitrage. You're saying, you know, it cost me so much to buy this investment or buy this, uh, this, this piece of equipment. And I know based on my run rate of clients who would use this or buy this from me if I had it available on a regular basis, or maybe I can make it faster now or I'm more creative, I have more control over it. So it's going to cost me this much in monthly payments because the interest and the principal payback. But on the other side, I know it's going to bring me this much. And because I'm controlling at a wholesale level, my profit margin just went up, right? So that's, that's a similar case. You didn't have to finance that, but if you did, you still could make the play. Did it make sense to go into debt to borrow the money to buy that piece of equipment? Does it make sense for you to uh, buy a building to house a certain uh, type of business you have? Or does it uh, make sense to go into debt to buy a certain amount of inventory? Inventory because you're, you're putting things together, whatever it is. Uh, does it make sense to, to leverage a uh, equity that you already have in, in, in properties? Um, if you, once you've been in the game long enough, you start to have equity in a property. Well, should I just leave it alone uh, and just let that property you know, go more free and clear, nothing wrong with that. But if I'm still in a growth mode and I can borrow at a reasonable enough rate and not put that asset at risk, well, how would I put it at risk? Well, I could leverage too much. I could take a house today that's producing um, a net after expense income to me, free and clear, say $1,000 a month. And if I went to the bank today to leverage, uh, maybe I could get 70%, pull 70% of the equity out, Today, interest rates are going up. Um, I got to be careful that I don't over leverage and squ squish my profit margin, my cash flow margin from 1,000. You know, if, if I got it you know, up to 750, so my two margin is 250, that's probably getting about as close as I would get today. It's probably even probably too tight. I probably would say maybe I'd leverage the point where I took $600 of that 1,000. Maybe I'd go that high. I need $400 of clearance margin to keep me safe in an environment where we're going into probably a recession where people are not going to have as much money uh, to, to, to con consume uh, the things they need. So being, using debt judiciously is the way I'd put it. And that's, that's again, it's just always going to be it depends.